Let's take some time to talk about Tara Lost and the Steelers defensive coordinator here on the Locked on Steelers podcast and the work he put in this year. In his first year as a defensive coordinator for the team, we saw some interesting things, but was it good enough? Are they trending in the right direction? I'm going to tell you why Mike Tomlin and the Steelers should let him cook a little bit more. We'll talk about that, the trajectory of the, of the Steelers' secondary and overall defense. And, of course, we're going to get to our grades of the Steelers' safeties on the year. It's going to be a fun episode of the Locked on Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things of the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show all anywhere you get podcasts, and especially on YouTube. Like this video if you saw it on YouTube. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes because we are your team every day, and we hope that you are your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. So, as I said before, I wanted to focus on Terrell Austin a bit today because I feel like we've done a lot of talking about Mad Canada and the offense and this, that, and the third. But I do think it's time to focus in a little bit on what the defense did this year. Now, it's important to note where the Steelers you know, are coming from with, with the promotion of Terrell Austin because some people were like, oh, they hired another guy from within. But he was a guy they brought from outside the organization to, to be the secondary coach for years. Uh, he was he was that. Then they brought him in in 2019 and through 2021. He worked with the secondary. So he's kind of been with the team as long as Bank of Fitzpatrick has been. And on on his way up, he you know kind of he becomes the defensive coordinator in his fourth year. Um, his his past coming into the Steelers in 2018 as defensive coordinator for the Bengals was rough. They finished in the bottom of the league. Granted, the Bengals were just also not going to be a team that you were going to do much there. Um, his time with the Lions, he had one year where they finished in the top five, and then some other years they kind of bounced around a bit. But this year with the Steelers, the Steelers get it finished as a top 10 points allowed defense, number 13 in uh, in yards allowed defense. But let's get into, like I think, what Terrell Austin actually did as a defensive coordinator. And, and in a year where I think it's important to remind everyone, you know, they were missing their superstar defensive player for seven games, and T.J. Watt, wasn't the same player even when he came back in his four, first four games back he averaged uh two pressures per game it wasn't until the last two games of the season where he was averaging five pressures per game again and you kind of saw that play out but I think a big part of what Terrell Austin did was he found ways to make matchups matter more for the Steelers secondary and put them in positions where they're going to make better plays in the football for example in 2021 the most forced incomplete passes, according to Pro Football Focus, on by the Steelers were tie, were a tie between Minka Fitzpatrick, Joe Hayden, and Joe Schobert. Each had six that year. And you think, okay, well, that's one thing. And forced incompletions basically being a combination of either a breakup or your coverage it impacted the play to make it not complete. In 2022, though, remember the top three guys all had six and and one of them was makeup, one of them was Joe Hayden, another was Joe Schobert. In 2022, Cameron Sutton had 14, Levi Wallace had nine, and then Minka, Fitzpatrick, and Terrell Evans each had five. So there were more there. Now, you might think, well, more forced incompletions, probably more passes get being getting off because T.J. Watt wasn't there, the Steelers' pass rush wasn't at home, which in a way is true. But another, I think, example of the Steelers' defensive backs being in more positions to make plays on the football and to be better, better there is that the quarterback's passer ratings against them dropped almost across the board for a lot of their, their better players. For Minka Fitzpatrick, it was 90.7 in 2021. It was 72.3 in 2022. For Cameron Sutton, it was 108. Point eight, the pass arena against him in 2021. It was just 69.6 in 2022. For Terrell Edmonds, it kind of got worse. Uh, Terrell Edmonds, of course, not the coverage expert, more of the kind of the all-around janitor guy that just covers whoever. He went from 104.7 to 131.8. But 
even looking at you know a guy who, who's not here anymore, Joe Hayden, his his pat passer rating against him was one nineteen point three. Levi Wallace's this year seventy four point six, and even James Pierre, who didn't play a, a ton, but when he did, he was in there. He was better in twenty twenty one. It was one hundred and sixteen in twenty twenty two. It was fifty nine point two. So across the board. You saw better passer rating numbers, better overall numbers when these guys were being were being targeted in 2022 versus 2021. Now, you'll probably wonder, well, wait a second. Is that just magic? Is that just, you know, guys got smarter all of a sudden? I do think there's growth in there. I think with James Pierre, too, I think he showed really good growth this season and showed that he can be a depth player that if they can afford to keep on the roster, they absolutely should. I think Cam Sutton has, has definitely continued to grow. He's a guy that sharpens his game every year. And, I, you know, I think Levi Wallace's athleticism is something to account for. But I think a big part of it is the Steelers allowing more man coverage schemes into their gameplay. Now, they're not solely relying on man coverage in their games, but they're doing it at a higher rate. According to Pro Football Focus, I wasn't able to get all the numbers from all the year, but the numbers I was worried to put up, Pro Football Focus pointed out that uh, when you when the Steelers, this, when, when all through week 12, the Steelers were running 42.6% per, uh, percent of the time they were running man defenses. That was the fourth, no, the fifth highest rate in the NFL at that point. Now, I didn't get, find the official numbers for um, for how that was at the end of the season, but still, through three quarters of the season, they're running the fifth most man defenses. And to compare that to where they were before, the Steelers used to run like 75% of the time. It was zone defense. That's just who they were. And I think that play, that, that switch and play, put more pressure on to say, hey, cornerbacks, safeties, win these matchups. We're going to put you in these specific spots. You know what this guy's coming at you with. It's not about playing the zone and worrying, worrying about these other things. We're going to let you run, hit, cover, make plays on the football. That's what you're going to do more often in the game. And again, it's not all game because you still want to confuse the quarterback. But you, I think there's there's an element of trying to rely on these guys to win those matchups and to be in position and say, hey, you know what? This play may it may very well fall all on you to 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 play to play one on one with this guy or to know you know where your help might be coming from. But you're definitely going to be playing man coverage in that spot. And I think that that did kind of allow guys to be in better position to make some plays in the ball because often with zone defenses, I think there's some quarterbacks that are getting used to it. You know, when, when uh, Dick LeBeau kind of made zone defenses, uh, you know, the, the Steelers zone blitz a thing in the, in the mid two thousands. Again, it was something that people weren't used to seeing as creative as it was. And a lot of quarterbacks fell victim to it, but the smarter quarterbacks like Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, who often went up against it, they often found ways around it. And there were certain days you could get somebody's number that way. But I still think that there's, you know, there were there were times where the Steelers were able to beat those guys because they relied on their guys in man coverage in some key situations. That's what Mike Tomlin referred back to at the start of the year when he was talking about having veteran cornerbacks across the board. Cam Sutton, Levi Wallace, Akella Witherspoon um, down the line. He said, he said, all of those guys are vets. They know where they got to be. And I think that was what the Steelers were looking for, were guys knowing where they had to be. Now, I will say this. I think Akella Witherspoon had the biggest adjustment stretch because he excelled, I think, in the Steeler, with the Steelers in 2021 in the limited time he had because they were playing more zone defense and he was kind of being able to make more plays from those situations. But when you put him in man – He's not as strong of a man type of coverage corner, and that's why he was getting eaten up, especially after the first week of the season. But again, it's not all man, but it's it's sprinkling it in. It's increasing the frequency which you're allowing your secondary to run those type of coverages. I think also Grady Brown, the secondary coach who's kind of stepped up as Terrell Austin has moved on to defensive coordinator. He deserves a ton of credit. He's also going to be a defensive coordinator at the Senior Bowl, so I'll be really intrigued to see who he gets to work with and what relationships he builds with that opportunity. But I still think it, this draws into the question as far as what is the plan for the defense? Terrell Austin did this, and they finished as a top-10 unit without its best player for two months. I think that, they, that you can it's fair to say – this defense can get better next year if they if they make the right additions. But what are those right additions? We've been talking about that a bit. We've talked about, you know, the importance of maybe adding a corner. Let's talk more about that in a bit and where I think that there's some interesting matchup concerns that the Steelers could either 
sway them in one direction or the other the conversation of drafting high to get a cornerback this year or reinforcing other parts of their defense we'll talk about that in just a minute here on the locked on Steelers podcast but first we got to talk to you guys about FanDuel because FanDuel has sponsored this episode and with the NFL playoffs being here we're really excited to talk to you about FanDuel because they're our new sports betting partner for the locked on podcast network and they're the number one sports book in America new customers you can join today and just get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed Guaranteed when you place your first bet of just five dollars, just sign up at fanduel.com slash locked on. That's L O C K E D O N locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with same game parlays. All that action on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. Football fans, don't miss out. Place your first five dollar bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose. And remember, that means if you place down your five dollar bet, with this special, with the Locked On special, you get $150 in free bets, win or lose. It doesn't matter if you win your bet. So go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the NFL. Back here in the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We're continuing this conversation about Terrell Austin and the direction of the defense. I think Terrell Austin has shown that, you know, again, with the switch to more man coverage alignments and setting the Steelers up in different ways, this defense led the NFL in interceptions, and they found a way to make that work without the superstar corner on their roster that everyone was looking like, oh, he's the shutdown corner on this team. You know, that's, you know, a lot like a Jalen Ramsey or a Darius Slate or any, you know, any of the top corners that you see across the NFL. Uh, but that brings into the question, if they did that this past year and TJ Watt wasn't even playing, do they need to go and get that superstar corner or do they need to kind of keep fortifying the defensive front to make sure that they're stuffing the run and getting after the quarterback better? Because if these guys this year with just kind of, you know, solid cornerbacks and a superstar safety and make up its Patrick, if they were able to lead the NFL in interceptions that way, why couldn't they do it again? And I think that's a reasonable question. On one hand, I think you could easily see uh, putting reinforcements in the secondary with us with a top line, top of the line cornerback to pair with Cam Sutton and Levi Wallace and James Pierre. You could make that a very vicious group and make them a, t- a pass defense that would that would have a chance to bang with teams like the Bengals, the Chiefs and the Bills, the guys who are considered the top class of the AFC right now. And uh, I, I certainly see the leverage to that argument. However, you could also see the Steelers kind of saying, you know what? Minka Fitzpatrick is that superstar back there. Everyone's going to kind of balance off of him. We're going to have really good role players around him, and that's what they're what they're going to be bringing to the table and keep investing in the other units to make them strong and then let the secondary kind of rely off the solid vets that they have, the solid role players, and then the superstar safety kind of be that guy. Does that f- system sound familiar to you at all? It should, because that's what they did with Troy Polamalu. Granted, Ike Taylor, I have always said, is, an, is a very underrated player. He should have been recognized more, but because he wasn't a super interceptor at quarterback, everyone saw him just kind of as more of like a decent guy who could break up passes, but that guy erased receivers off, off the field. Either way, you had him, Deshae Townsend, Ryan Clark, or Chris Hope, or whoever else was that free safety. All of those guys you saw you saw as good role players, good guys that fit the system. But Troy Polamalu was the X factor, just like Minka Fitzpatrick is the X factor. So I don't think it's crazy if the Steelers may look at this draft situation and this free agency, and you know what? And say you know what? We're we're gonna reinvest at the linebacker position. We're gonna make sure that that unit is really, really, really good because the secondary is gonna be fine. Terrell Austin is gonna dry out the plays, and this these veterans that we've been able to keep in the fold again, they got to keep Camp Sutton. I think that's a really big part of this plan. You know, maybe draft still draft a young corner in the second or third round, but maybe not the first round. Let that pick go to another part of the team that you need to replenish a little bit faster. I think you can there there can be an argument to be made for that for the Steelers building their roster moving forward. And again, using Minka Fitzpatrick as that rallying point to say, hey, you know what? Don't need anyone else to be a superstar player back there because he's kind of leading that right now and then this way you can still trust your defensive front if you're investing in that defensive front to one stop the run to rush the passer if they become elite at that and you have a secondary that can still even if they don't lead the nfl interceptions if they're up there in the top five 
that makes you an elite defense. If you're stuffing the run, if you're getting after the quarterback at a high rate, and then when they are throwing the ball, your secondary is ready to take advantage of it. I think there's a merit to that conversation. And again, this is not me trying to say, oh, push people away from drafting a cornerback in the first round. I like this cornerback class. I think they could get some good guys. But as a person, when I I talk to you here on this podcast, I try to be honest. I try to be real. I try to go over all the different possibilities that are actually that I think are relevant to conversations. And I do think it's it's a relevant thing to consider. The Steelers may not need to draft a cornerback super high this year. I still think they should try to add something to that room as far as youth, but maybe not with the first round pick or the second the second pick they have, which kind of is a first round pick because it's the thirty second overall pick because of the Dolphins uh, forfeiting their pick, and of course the Steelers getting this pick from the Bears for the Chase Claypool trade. All that being said, I I think that this Steelers defense, they they, they need to find a way, I think, to keep Cam Sutton, to keep KZ and or or Edmonds or both, and and kind of keep this group, this this core together, because I think what what they're able to do is kind of special. And to explain how some of the man coverage stuff, the the mix-ups that they're able to draw up, I want to go back to some clips that I played for you. Well, one clip that I played for you during the season, one cl- one clip that I didn't get a chance to get to. The first clip is Minka Fitzpatrick after the Raiders win. Uh, everyone remembers Kenny Pickett's drive down the field and the classic win and the awesome feel that it had. But that defense shut down Devontae Adams in, in that game. And I, I thought that that was such a huge element of that game because I was not sure if the Steelers were going to be able to take him away with the amount of big play wide receivers who um who showed up and who and showed out the Steelers uh all year long. But in, in that game, Devontae Adams, and he was targeted nine times, two catches, 15 yards. Here's Mika Fitzpatrick explaining how the Steelers took that away. Um we we were we, we had safeties going down to him on first and second down, third down we were having doubles on them. And I'm telling everybody else they had to win the one on one. Um this this is a lot of communication because it's different doubles, different looks, you know what I'm saying that that that, that uh <laughs> that, that we do, but we, we do it a good amount throughout the season. So it's, it's, it's easy. So you, you heard Minka Fitzpatrick there. I And if you remember the episode after the game, I played that clip and I was talking about the level of effort that they put in to take away Devontae Adams. And it didn't work all year. Of course, A.J. Brown ate this team ate this team alive. You know, the Bills had their way. But you saw when this secondary was able to kind of play together, and especially when T.J. Watt came back and that defensive front was a little more solidified, they were able to key in on top receivers. And if not take them away, at least neutralize them and not make them the killers uh, of that they, they that they can be that we that we know they can be and we see them do to other teams and again it comes down to matchups and I think this is the part that Tara Austin does have an impact on the game plan I will not argue with the with the fact that I do agree that Mike Tomlin is still the engineer that's behind that's deep behind the scenes cranking the you know t- trying to turn everything that, that's getting everything going to make the uh, the base of the foundation of the defensive plan. I think he's the guy that's building them to get that get there, but he does take input from his assistant coaches. Don't let anyone tell you that he doesn't. And Terrell Austin, I think is very much part of this. Hey, let's trust these guys to make plays. Let's get these matchups that we're going to trust these guys to work things around and, and disguise things and do more things to cover up and take away some of these top options and make things a little more complicated for quarterbacks when they play our team. Hence, that's why I, I, I went over all those NFL passer rating numbers when going against certain Steelers defenders last year versus versus this year. Keith Butler, for you know, for all his for all his his pros and cons, he was very much a, a, a in the box front seven type of coordinator. He schemed up the pressures. They led the NFL in sacks for five straight years. No one had done it for more than two years in a row before that, that he deserves credit for that, but the Steelers needed to incorporate something else into their game. And I think that they're confident that they'll be able to get pressure, but building back off of what make Fitzpatrick said, listen to how DeMonte KZ kind of answers my question when I ask him after the Browns game, because in the Browns game and in, in, in the, in the regular season finale, one of the keys I had for the Steelers in that game was to take away Amari Cooper. And they did just that two catches, 51 yards, 51 yards, not exactly what you wanted, two catches, but only allowing two catches, no touchdowns. I think that they did a solid job against him in that game. And I was, and I didn't get a chance to study it that much 
right after the game. And this is me in the locker room just talking to the Steelers. They know they've kind of been bounced from the playoffs. So they're kind of like, let's get out of here. But Demonte KZ did kind of, you know, he was like, uh, he, he he started to he started to say like, you know, no, that's not what we did. But then you kind of hear him say, what did we do, Minka, on 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 uh, on Cooper? And you hear and you'll hear Minka kind of be like, yeah, we did something different. And just just listen to this clip. And it's kind of funny because you hear them kind of look at you. You even see make it kind of look and smile in the corner of the camera when 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 I ask when I'm asking this question, and you hear them just basically like, "Yeah, we're not going to divulge our secrets." But here was KZ and Minka from that very moment. Uh, this was right after the Steelers went over the Cleveland Browns in the season finale. Thank you. You, got, you guys limited a very talented receiver in Amari Cooper today. Was the plan for, for limiting him similar to how y'all played Devontae Adams? Nope. Nope, so it wasn't. What did you guys do different? What we do different today, Mink? We didn't double them like that. We did, we did a lot of things different. We, we did a lot a little, of things, but we didn't double them like that. A little bit of, little bit of this, a little, little bit of that. that. <laughs> so you didn't know where we was coming from. <laughs> but we told it was a double. Right, what can you say about you, your, you guys as a secondary and how you guys have... So, so right then and there, like you see, like they kind of, they're kind of like, yeah, we're not trying to just spill all our secrets out there. And I look back at the film, they didn't necessarily double him as much, but they found different ways to bracket him that would kind of, kind of disguise where the, where the coverage was coming from. And that I think was a really good part to Terrell, to, to Terrell Austin's, excuse me, uh, defensive coordinator job this past year. And it's why I think the Steelers, so far, need to let this experiment continue going to see how he does with this secondary. I'll also be interested to see who they keep around. I think KZ Edmonds and Fitzpatrick are a heck of a safety trio. And, you know, frankly, and we'll talk about this in my safety grades, I think we needed to see more of that group. Unfortunately, injuries kind of hindered that throughout the year. But if they can all be healthy going into next season, I think it will help a lot of the machinations that Terrell Austin wants to draw up and wants to execute for the Steelers defense. We'll talk about those safety grades in just a minute here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. So don't go anywhere. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Stay tuned right back with those safety grades here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. Back here on the Locked on Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We just got done talking a lot about Terrell Austin and the secondary and what the direction of the Steelers defense needs to go in. I do think that, again, I, I think it would make a lot of sense to, one, add a cornerback that's young to this room. But if the Steelers saw these guys as being the kind of guys who can carry the defense forward uh, as as is, and they needed to invest in more pass rushers, more run stuffers, more guys to help with off-ball coverage at the linebacker position, I would get it. I would understand it. But let's go over the safety grades and why I understand it, because I, I go over them. I, I looked at, the, at those safety grades. I look at these safety grades, and it makes me think, okay, there's merit there. Now, let's start with a guy who didn't get to play a whole lot, but you know was able to get on the field a little bit. And that was, of course, uh, uh, Trey Norwood, uh, second-year player. I gave him one star in the season, but he had he had three skulls. So, according to my grading scale, that's good enough for a C minus if you're kind of just a couple skulls under your stars. Uh, but Trey Norwood, I thought his best plays were when he kept himself in position to make the tackle in front of him, and as a depth safety, that's a really good thing. Trey. Trey Norwood is a smart player, and he's a guy that's going to adapt, continue adapting to, to how the Steelers play. I think next year will be a really good chance for him to grow. He's Again, he's not a guy that's super fast or super long or super big, but I think that he's a guy that knows how he's, he's learning how to get to his spots faster and learning how to play within this defense. And having a guy like that who can kind of float around the field can be huge. Cam Sutton wasn't Cam Sutton in his second year, and I'm not saying that Trey Norwood's going to turn out to be kind of how Cam Sutton has been at cornerback, but – I think the Trey Norwood's the kind of learner that the Steelers want at the safety position. But let's go over those top three guys that I was mentioning earlier. Let's start with Terrell Edmonds because Terrell Edmonds, I, I looked out throughout the year, and anyone who knows me knows that I am a person who, whenever people slander Terrell Edmonds, I'm like, guys, you got to chill out. I'm not a person who thinks that he stinks. He's a bum. I will say he has not lived up to the 18th overall pick of the of the draft type of pick. The Steelers desperately needed a safety. They went and got one. I think he brings you a lot of the physical characteristics, the athleticism, but not the playmaking. And but even so, he had 11 stars on, on the year, only seven skulls. That's good enough for a C plus in my book on on the year. I thought Terrell Edmonds 
was a solid guy that kind of kept plays in front of him, did what he was supposed to do, you know, wasn't crushed uh, in, in a lot of games. There were some games that he was beaten considerably, but a lot of games he was able to kind of be the guy that hung in there, made the smart play, but he just doesn't have that turnover knack. And that's fine if he's a, a guy that doesn't cost you a lot against the salary cap like he didn't this year, uh, and he's a solid role player for you. And I think at, as a guy who's, what, 25, 26 years old, I think he's in a good position to be able to be like, you know what? I can be, I can make a, a, a whole career. I got like five to six more years or however long he wants to stay in the NFL. And you can pair up with Minka Fitzpatrick, who right now is being receiving all the awards right now to be the NFL's top safety again for the third time uh, in, in his career. Why not hit your wagon to that and a defense that's going to highlight you and get you more chances to be a playmaker? And who knows, maybe they go get his brother Tremaine in the offseason. That's a whole other episode. We'll deal with that later. But again, Terrell Edmonds, I gave a uh a a, a, C, a C, uh C what I give him a C plus because of his 11, 11 stars and seven skulls. Now here was the interesting grade and I was kind of I was going back over my grades to make sure that this was accurate. But Demonte KZ when he played for the Steelers, I gave him seven stars in the season, but I never once gave him a skull. And if he and if again if you're if you're not sure about what those grading rubrics are, here's the grading rubrics. His stars were just each game I gave them either one, two, or three stars for good for good plays, great play, great play, or being an elite performer that day. One, two, or three skulls for bad play, you know, kind of a bad game, or just being like a guy that needs to just go to the bench forever. Uh, if you get like a three skull, it's it's you had a really bad game that you want to forget, but. Uh, DeMonte KZ never even had the first part where he had a bad play in a game and never redeemed himself. Uh, he seven stars on the season while I was going over uh, his performances. Uh, and again, this is a guy who missed half the year uh, and he really caught on for the Steelers. He filled in huge for the Steelers against the Saints. I gave him a two star grade there uh, when they lost to the Ravens. I thought he was one of the best factors of the defense that kind of kept them in at times. I gave him a star there against the Raiders. I gave him a star and against the Browns. He had a pick and he was all over the place. I gave him three stars. And I think that as time if time goes on and he's still with the Steelers and with Terrell Austin and what they're trying to do, I think that he can be a very smart player who who's who's a part of a lot of moving pieces that got our disguises. And if the Steelers are getting pressure on quarterbacks, it could lead to a lot more turnovers for this defense in the coming years. So Demonte KZ, I gave him a I gave I believe I gave him a B. Yeah, I gave him a straight up B because of his seven stars over over zero skulls in that situation. But of course, we got to talk about Minka Fitzpatrick. And I'm not going to try to say something that someone else hasn't said about Minka Fitzpatrick because I think a lot of people have said it. He's the best safety in football. This guy had 23 stars in the season, only two skulls. That's 21 stars over skulls. That gets an A-plus in my book. He was a fantastic safety this year. He's being first-team all-pro, first-team pro football writers, pro first-team this, first-team that. Anyone that's trying to sell you that Minka Fitzpatrick isn't the real deal, isn't the superstar safety of the NFL, isn't the guy that that that, that quarterbacks you know have nightmares about and want to avoid, they're lying to you because he is that good. And again, I think the Steelers... Though Minka Fitzpatrick plays free safety, you know, a lot like how it's funny, a lot like how Ed Reed and Troy Polamalu were different in, in the 2000s when they were in their heyday and everyone always tried to say who was the better safety. And the real answers was Troy, Troy Polamalu is more of a strong safety that plays this position and Ed Reed's more of a center fielding free safety. Minka Fitzpatrick is that center fielding free safety. Now, the Steelers move him around a lot, around uh, uh, just like Ed the Ravens did with Ed Reed a bit. But make no mistake, I think Minka Fitzpatrick is every bit the X factor that Troy Polamalu was not saying that they did the same things, but he is a game changer in, in, in a lot of the ways that Troy, Troy was now he's not going to leap over the line. He's not going to do the amazing, the insane, like where did Troy Polamalu come from on those plays, but he's going to be able to do a lot of the center fielding things that I think Ed Reed was able to do for the Ravens game. And I'm not, I'm not saying that he is Ed Reed, but I am saying that the role that he plays for the Steelers defense is pivotal. He's a, he's, he's a pillar player. For that, for that, for the team, and it he he covers so many different options, and even Joe Burrow when he was like when he heard that Minka Fitzpatrick might miss the game in their in their their rematch this year, he was like, you know, he he can miss one, and that's Joe Burrow who you know he's like I am the window's always open, and he's the guy smoking cigars, he's he's cool Joe, he's he's saying all those things, and he's acknowledging, yeah, I, I don't like you know having to play against that guy sometimes because he is pretty tough. I think Minka Fitzpatrick is that guy, that's why I gave him an A plus. On my grading scale, he was phenomenal this year. And again, if you're Terrell Austin and you're and you're this defense, 
I see a lot of things kind of being curtailed to put him in situations to be the key factor where you're looking to try to see, hey, where can we get this quarterback to flinch? Where can we get him to think that the coverage isn't there? And how can we put Minka Fitzpatrick in the spot to kind of make that happen? I think the Steelers, they got a lot of pieces uh, going going for them right now. And Minka Fitzpatrick is, is one of the biggest ones. I, I put him right next to TJ Watt and Cam Hayward. Uh, and, and again, Minka Fitzpatrick was only 26 years old this year. It wasn't like he was. Uh, it, it wasn't like he was. You know, he, he's in his thirties. He's about to hit his prime, and I think like that's like he's playing like he's in his prime. But really, like I start to look at those guys when they're like 28, 29, That's when I'm like, okay, now this player's fully seasoned, has everything going for him. This is when we're going to see the, see their best years. Uh, and for the Steelers, he had a career high six interceptions this year. Um, you know, and, and he blocked the extra point against the Bengals. Just a phenomenal player that I think that uh, the Steelers know. Hey, they got to find a way to make sure that he's part of the fold. He also had the pick six in the opener. Um, you know, just again, phenomenal player. And I think that with Terrell Austin, Terrell Austin's future, I think the Steelers continue need to continue to work with him to kind of specialize in the, in the secondary if they can get a nice number one type of corner that's like six three and runs like a nice four four forty or whatever and he's fits in there and he's a man coverage phenom great awesome but don't be shocked if they opt for a super defensive run stuffer of the defensive line a big guy that's like six foot five and 300 pounds and eats people for breakfast don't be surprised if they go and get an off-ball linebacker in the second round who can cover and hit and stuff the run and kind of be the guy that they were hoping Devin Bush would be with uh with with, with their pick um uh, don't be surprised if that's their angle also in the offensive line don't don't miss that out as well but as far as the secondary I think they're in, I think that with the way the defense is headed they're in good hands but again I think it's very important to keep Cam Sutton and add add a rookie somewhere to the mix so that Levi Wallace Cam Sutton they can kind of be your top outside corners maybe you bring back Arthur Mallette James Pierre still in the rotation if anyone goes down but then that rookie whether they're a first second third fourth round pick they can learn behind them and hopefully you develop them into one of the cornerbacks of the future or who knows Maybe they work their way to be a starter and you score big with one either way. Either way, I think Terrell Austin, the, me the message that I put here from the beginning, the Steelers should let Terrell Austin cook. Thanks, everyone, for checking out the Locked On Steelers podcast. I've been your host, Chris Carter. Thanks for checking out the show. Remember, we are on all the podcasting platforms out there. We suggest that you check us out there on your favorite podcasting platform. If you ever just like listening to us in the car, thanks to all the people who do that. But also, watch us on YouTube. Like this video if you saw it on YouTube. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day. And remember, if you want to help us out, go to Apple Podcasts, rate us five stars with a positive comment. Do both at the same time. You get a special shout out at the end of the show. We'll be back tomorrow. We got Tony Serino back on the show. It'll be a fun one. We'll be talking all things Steelers with Tony, our man who used to co-host this show with me. Uh, very happy to have him back on the show. But tune in on Wednesday. We will see you then.